Do you ever wonder why the rich always get richer and the poor just gets poorer and poorer? Do you ever wonder what makes the rich richer? How are they able to make such good decisions and how are they able to accumulate wealth over and over again? I'm not only talking about billionaires. I'm talking about regular people that just worked hard all their lives and made the, make the right steps and just became rich. Okay, friends, this is Yossi Kaplan from the Real Estate Agent and Mortgage Broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about how to invest like the rich. There you go. How to invest like the rich. What is it about the rich that makes them rich? And what do they do in order to become richer and richer all the time? All right, let's start. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent and Mortgage Broker. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in condos or properties in Toronto and outside it, give me a shout and I will help you as much as I can. Um, I got a lot of information to run for you today on and with about and today we're gonna view uh, a few projects we're gonna view property properties all in the name of how to invest like the rich so what is it that the rich do well the first thing the rich do that regular people don't do is they have a certain mindset and that is the mindset of the rich you see a lot of people come to me and say you'll see the market's gonna crash you'll see I should invest but I haven't Oh, you know, five years ago, I was thinking the market was peaking at $600 a foot, but I haven't, and now those condos are selling at $1,112 a foot. I could have doubled my money. I said, no, you can actually lock more, because if you're investing that $600 a foot, and you, know, you only pay 15% or 20% with the mortgage, that's only $120 a foot. But when your property goes to $1,200 a foot, that means you're 10 times your investment. That is investing like a rich, okay? Seeing the future seeing the opportunity and focusing on the long term okay a lot of people they try to do little tricks little tricks um, with very high risk that just doesn't work the rich don't do that the rich think forward real estate is a game of thinking forward uh, take for example this project has been recently announced at blue and dundas um, years ago one of the very first videos of fm hate maybe the first one was called giraffe condos and at the time, there was uh, a developer that took over this uh, building here, or this corner here. And uh, pretty sure that was the one. Yeah, it was. And uh, they decided to do some giraffe condo. It was really strange. Um, but it was kind of cool. It never happened. I don't know, I'm not sure why. But here, probably 10 years later, finally this block is coming, is coming available. Now, why? Now, let's look at it from the perspective of the rich, okay? Just play with it. If I were rich, what would I do? If I were rich, how, what would I say? If I were rich, what would my day be like? If I were rich, how would I do it, okay? So, if I were a rich real estate investor, I'd look at this, uh, I'd look at this corner and I can come with, uh, you know, the rich will say, well, I should look into this because this could be a really good opportunity. I mean, there's a lot of train lines coming in here. Obviously, you can see this is huge. Uh, the subway is right here. Trains coming right under the subway here. Is very accessible. I'm right on Blue Street. Uh, Dundas Square, that means that uh, Ross's Wales is right below me. You know, we go Dundas and then it splits. The right is Ronsi and the left is Dundas bending. Dundas here goes south, but then he'll bend uh, west uh, or east, actually, if you're coming from the north. Okay, so all these areas is, is coming, and if you continue up there, then you get to uh, a Jane, a Net, you get to uh, the stockyards, all these areas. So the rich will think, that looks like a really good area that I think could be developed any further, and it's been depressed for a long time. Now, the poor, the not successful would think, well, that's a, that's a poor area. Who wants to be there? But then they go, but downtown, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. So the rich think forward, and they really think, um, you know, systematically about where things are going, where those who are not rich, they focus on problems and not on solutions. They focus on why I shouldn't do this instead of where can I make the decision that will make me rich? Where can I make the decision that will result in success? One type of people, the rich, is focused on success and the not successful is focusing on not being successful, on the problems. I can't do this because the problem is, but all these things. You know, um, <laughs> I was talking to uh, um, someone uh, recently uh, regarding some investment and say well I heard there was a shooting there well yeah you know there's a shooting everywhere in Toronto you open the map and you see it's all full of red dots ah really yeah I show them so the number one thing about the rich is the mindset and the mindset of the rich is looking to find opportunities to buy to invest in but also selling when it's time to sell if I extracted value out of this investment 
I probably want to capitalize on it, capitalize me, put the money in my pocket. So the rich will say, this is great. I made an investment. I'm going to make some money on it. I'm going to put the money in my pocket. I'm going to call Yossi. Yossi, sell this for me. And let's close this deal. And I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. It's all good. And in a couple of years, I want to buy again. I'm going to call Yossi. Say, Yossi, it's time to buy. Find me you know what I like. Find this stuff for me. So okay. The not rich will say, why, well, you know, if I sell it, then I'm going to have to pay capital gains tax. And it's going to be vacant. And I'm going to pay the lawyer. And there's expenses. They don't focus on the result. The result is there's money in your pocket. The rich goes, you know, there's a cost to the selling. It's totally fine. Um, whatever it's going to cost me to sell, I'm just going to sell it. And whatever is left in my pocket, I know what it is because I calculated it. So let's say my cost uh, cost me, you know, the real estate fees and the tax fees and the disposal fee and whatever it is. It's all good. Close the mortgage fee and capital gains fee. But they go, okay, that's okay because when I bought it, I knew I'm going to buy it. I'm going to make some money and I'm going to sell it. And there's a cost of getting into the deal, cost of getting out of the deal. It doesn't hold them back. It's just a part of the game. And once you disconnect from the psychological, you know, like being uh, engulfed in the problem instead of what's coming out of this action, then you're free, okay? But those who are not rich, they just don't see it. They can't think like that. They're just contracted and they're having a problem seeing the big picture. And the big picture, you know, when you buy a property, there's cost to get in. When you buy a property, there's cost to get out. What is this doing there? <laughs> um, but that's all good because that's what's going to happen, okay? Um, here is, uh, I'll just run you through a couple of things here. So this is a listing I just put up uh, uh, over the weekend. It's a rental, it's a furnished rental, a large two bedroom, two bath. It's about uh, just over a thousand square feet. That's a Toronto model at the Maple Leaf Square on the 29th floor. And it's a full two bedroom, two bathroom. And it's a great unit, you can see. Uh, the building is well serviced, everyone knows uh, the Maple Leaf Square. And at 3,500, oh, at 3,500, I cannot go back. At 3,500, it makes it makes good sense. Now, um, another person would have said, "Well, you know, that's a problem because the the <laughs> no." Always see the positive. It may not be for you, but you gotta see the positive, okay? And the positive is there's a good unit. The price is good. It's completely furnished. It's very reasonable, even for a two bedroom. It's reasonable even if it weren't furnished, okay? So the rich will go, well, you know, maybe I need a place to crash for six months or 12 months. Maybe I take this unit, not less than six months. Okay, that's because uh, we're not playing the Airbnb game here. I'm not, I don't play the Airbnb game because it's too much effort. It's too much work. It doesn't fit my mentality. My mentality is do it once, do it really well, acquire the property, make the deal, and let it sit and let it run its course, its course until, you know, I've extracted the value and then I'm out. That's how you do it. So if you need to sell, you sell it. If you need to buy, you buy it. Okay. Uh, here's another one I found. Just looking for a rental for a friend. Um, really nice. This is unfurnished, 3200. It's uh, Blue and Bathurst. Obviously, location is um, maybe not. Uh, to me, it's an amazing location. I love to be Blue and Bathurst, but some people re really want to be at the core next to the towers because that's where they work. And if they have to go from Blue and Bathurst to the core every morning, that's an hour. Nonetheless. You know, if that's your life, look at this beautiful unit. And that's, again, to me, that's that's a good value. That's a good deal, okay? So it, it looks fantastic. It's a little newer than Maple Leaf. Uh, if you like the Blue and Bathurst, then you are here, and it's all good, okay? And, of course, um, the next thing, so that's the first thing, is about, you know, seeing the opportunity and understanding where you are. The second thing that the rich do, that the not rich do not do, is they do the research and they use the right professionals. Now, I get a lot of guys who are like, oh, yeah, I bought here and I bought there. And they, they, they've done really, really well. But now, with the market is peaking, okay, and you remember I gave you a video. Um, so, let's go here um, to the real estate channel, to Yossi Kaplan real estate channel. And I gave you a video to help you calculate the cost and, and show you a few things. So, um, if I go to the video tab here, you'll see what I mean. Uh, the rich do the the rich, they do the research. All these videos you see here are really research, my own research that I do anyway every morning and I share with you. I start my day with one or two hours of just studying, researching, you know, no phone calls, no emails, just diving deep, fresh mind, 
a little coffee, and just dive right into it. So you can see here, you know, I developed the condo calculator, okay? So I developed the condo, the condo calculator because I needed that tool for myself to calculate will this investment break even and at what percent deposit. So how would I do it? Well, I just wrote myself a little spreadsheet, and before you knew it, I came up with the condo calculator that gives a complete cash flow analysis, okay? Now, if you can do this, your level is quite advanced, and it's really good. And by the way, you can download this for free. Uh, just go to thecondocalculator.ca, put your name, your email, I'm not a robot, and the system will send you an email with the link. Click the link and download that file. Put it back on your Google Drive in absolute privacy. Put it in your uh, Apple Numbers or Excel or Office, uh, free Office, whatever you want. But you can open that file. Absolutely, you don't, there's no login required, nothing, okay? So you can play with this tool and nobody can see what, what you're doing. I designed it so you can download the file so you get 100% privacy. I don't even know who downloaded the file. I, I, I can't even follow uh, through the Google Sheets who downloaded So you do register, you get some emails from um, some more tips and tricks and just download the file and play with it. And here, you know, if, if you're thinking like the rich, you start to do the numbers. So if I buy one king and I just have King West here, but it could be anywhere, it could be uh, Hamilton. And this could be uh, Toronto, and this could be another Toronto. Okay, and you can put what you buy, and how many beds, and how many square feet. And then you'll put the purchase price, and the system, you basically put enter value in the yellow, and then the system will give you the results in the green. Then you can see your deposits, 20%, you want to put 30%, just hit a 10 here. And there, there's extensive videos on using the condo calculator here, this one, and the 450. And uh, all these here, and, and some of these here, they're all filled. So if you want to go details, just watch these videos. My point is that the rich do the research, rich search, <laughs> the rich search. They do the rich search, the research. Okay, so they know what they're getting into, and then they do the cash flow analysis. Now, if the cash flow do uh, analysis doesn't work for them, they they're gonna start looking at the numbers. Oh, what happens if I put 20% extra? Okay, now my numbers have changed. What happens this? What happens then? How can I reach these points? Maybe I have to buy something cheaper, okay? So what happens if I only pay 700,000 for this uh, 750 square feet condo? Now I pay 903 square feet, and I put so much down, and here are my numbers, and all, and so and so and so, okay? And then you can and then you can play with the maintenance fee, you can play with the municipal tax, you can play with the mortgage, and start to get understanding of how to project what your investment will yield. Now the rich, the other thing they do is they don't, they're not stuck on one thing, but they're really trying to understand the big picture, the global picture, what's going on. And now, you got to understand something about, about um, source of information these days. There are objective sources of information, which just gives you data, okay? So this site here is pure data. There's actually, there's no interference with the data. So you look at this project here, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, you open this one, it gives you the basic information, and you can go here, put your name, email, phone, and tell me if you're a realtor or not, and I'll send you the information for each and every one of those builders you want to know about. Just call me. Uh, and then he shows you who it is. It's Steeple Architect, excellent company, by the way. High rise. Sorry, I cannot talk right now. Um, uh, number of units, the address, everything you need to know is you can start doing your rich search, your research. So, you know, the junction is really hot. You'll see, by the way, made a video about the junction. Go here, junction. And I extensively went to the junction. And there's top junction condos, junction house, junction house, Black Friday, uh, East Junction condo. A, a lot of stuff about junction. Okay? So, you do the research. You do the rich search. Where was I? And, and you start to get understanding of what you're getting into. Now you can go, you can do your research by going to the site, looking at what's happening there. You know, anything you need to know um, in order to get a good understanding of what you're getting into and does it fit your profile? Does it fit your needs? Because when you're a rich investor, you're going to plan forward. This is what I want to do. Maybe set some goals. I want to own five properties, houses, condos, land, whatever, in the next five years. Okay, where do I want to own these properties? I want to own three properties in Toronto and two... Uh, Hamilton and Brantford, Kitchen and Waterloo, okay? Okay, great. What kind of properties do I want to I wanna own in Toronto? In Toronto, I want to own uh, two condos and a house. <clears throat> and in the other town, I want to own 
um, two brand new condos because I live in Toronto, it's too far for me. So I'm gonna go and uh, buy some like fire and forget kind of properties. That's totally cool. I don't need anything else. Okay, that's really good. So now you're starting to think, okay, here is the King of Portland as it was called, now it's Kingly. So if you were to invest in Kingly at the time, you would have bought these units for about, uh, and this is the Adelaide side, by the way, and this is the King side, okay? It's, it's, we used to see it from the other way. That's the Thompson right here. Is it? Uh, yeah, prob probably, yeah, that must be. Yeah, because this is, uh, yeah, more or less. Okay, so if you were to buy this at six hundred dollar foot, and now you can sell these things at a thousand or eleven hundred foot, you know, remember your twenty percent was one hundred twenty dollars. That's what you actually paid. The rest was paid in the bank. And then if you sold it for a thousand dollars a foot, you know, your markup uh, wasn't from six hundred to a thousand. It's actually what was from one twenty to a thousand because I didn't put that money. I had a partner. The partners hold the bank. So the rich are planning forward. They go, well, I'm gonna need a partner to buy these properties, even if I have zero dollars. You know, I have a friend, this is a real story, who owns a bunch of properties. Now, this guy, what he did, um, he is very good with the numbers. He's very good with the property management. He's very detail-oriented person, everything, little thing, which is perfect. And imagine, there's someone else who has a lot of money, but just no time. They're so busy. They've already made the riches. They want to go somewhere. they got to find someone who can actually find the properties and manage it for them. So these two got together. The person with no money but great knowledge and excitement and really knows how to do it because he's just willing to work it. And the person with the money, one put the money, the other put the work, and together now they own a whole bunch of income properties, rental income properties. So why not? You can do that, okay? The nutrich will think, oh, I don't have any money, I'm too busy, maybe later, maybe when I grow up. <laughs> it's just it's just not gonna happen. You have to enjoy each and every day and you gotta go for it. You gotta go for it. And that brings me to the third point that the rich do, that the not rich do not do, and the rich, they take action. So they set the goals, they set the plan, they do the research, and then they take action. And rich doesn't have to be a billionaire like Warren over there. There he is. This guy really enjoys life. He loves the little things in life. We'll get to this. Um, but what they, yes, do is they take action. And by taking action, I mean they act on it. That turned out very close to the render, by the way. It looks really much like it. Really cool. Um, so the rich take action. Once you research the information and you look at the data and you talk to a lot of people and, and you know, like, you know where you're going, it doesn't have to take long. Remember, it doesn't have to take long. Why? Because... You may know a little bit about it already because, you know, there's a reason why you have some money. There's a reason why you've been rich. It's because you've been using this mindset over and over again. And there's a reason why you don't have any money is because your mindset doesn't allow you that. I remember I was uh, at the park uh, one summer hanging out and this person comes and we just have this chat. And he tells me, man, it, it, I remember everything that person told me. It was a problem after problem after problem. I can't do this and I can't do that. And, and I looked at him, I go, there's nothing wrong with you. You can do anything you want. You're a free person. Just go do it. But they couldn't fathom the idea. They actually deserve it, and they can do it, and they can actually invest or even do anything for themselves. The rich, you know, they just, they just don't bother with this. And rich can be just mom and pop. It could be just a bunch of immigrants like myself just coming in with just a big idea and just big desire to make things happen. It can happen in real estate, but it can happen anywhere and through anything, okay? You just gotta go for it, my friends. You gotta plan, you gotta know what you wanna do, and then you gotta go for it. There's just no other way, okay? Um, <clears throat> one day it's gonna be like this, one day it's gonna be like that, one day it's gonna be this, but you have to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to look at what's available. You have to do the research. You must talk to professionals because professionals are the ones that have all the secrets that they know. And you know, someone like myself, sometimes I say something to people and then they come to me, you'll see years ago, you told me this and it was the best advice I've ever got. I said, okay, I don't remember what I said, uh, but the point is, if you speak to people who are in it, you know, day in, day out, they think like this, they talk like that, they act like it, you know, you wake up in the morning for it, you go to bed for it, that's what you do. And, and if this is what happens, 
<clears throat> it's just gonna happen for you, okay? People are gonna get attracted to your energy. People are gonna say, hey, we wanna invest with you, or can you recommend for an investment for us, or we have money but don't know where to go, or we like this project, or we need to find the money, but it's just gonna to come together, okay? Um, I can tell you that since making these videos, I get more and more people calling me than ever before. And I was doing a lot of blog posts, especially on Urban Realty, on and on and on, so many blog posts, but there's nothing like video because people just like videos, you know? So, okay, so if that's the thing, let's make more videos. And of course, the videos, ha the videos have to be um, fitting. And my videos are fitting for the people who want to make it. If you want to talk about how the market's going to crash, that's just not the channel for you, okay? We investors are interested in making great investments, having a great life, and having a great time at it, and making lots of money. So I go after what I think is the best possibilities that I can find as an investor, whether it's a uh, super planned uh, communities, okay, or secrets of selling your condo assignments, or wise cross town, and I basically go over and over and go over various things, and it just this thing is endless, okay? There's just so many options here. Internet's kind of wonky today. Uh, let's see if that works just for kicks okay so in this case you know we're looking in, in the panel as I said the West Condos fantastic project by the way um, I think this project particularly will attract a lot of rich people because they're going to be attracted to the cleanliness and it's quiet it's serene but it's very unique and it's got long term value exactly what a rich person would look for I mean when you look at our friend Warren where is he I think he was here somewhere. So Warren here, you know, he is a contrarian. Uh, this guy is 85 years old, give or take, and he gets up in the morning, he still lives in the same house, he lived for 50 years, <laughs> and he's like one of the world's richest, but he just doesn't care. This guy eats a McDonald's lunch every day. You know, he eats his cheeseburger and fries or whatever it is every day. He just, because he's just having a great time. And if you're having a great time, you're in the moment, you really focus on what you do, there's no way you're not going to be successful. You will be. But if you're focusing, that's a problem, and I can't do this, and I don't have the money, and maybe I'll do it next year, and it's just, it's not going to happen for you, and you're just going to find yourself next year, and the year after, and the year after, in the exact same place over and over again. So, don't. So, set your goals, okay? I want to be a rich real estate investor. Even if you have no money, it doesn't matter, Okay? The next thing is to start researching the market and use the right professionals. So you can call me, Yossi Kaplan. I'm a real estate agent, mortgage broker. I can help you, direct you to the right investments that will fit your investor profile, it fit what you can afford right now. It can help you with getting the mortgage, can help you with selling your properties. A lot of people come to me and say, you know, we bought all these condos 10 or 20 years ago. They're kind of getting old. Condo fees are getting higher. Why don't we just sell them and reinvest? That's a very good idea in my opinion. Because as the city grows and rejuvenates itself, you want to be, you want to keep up with it. But when we get these properties, we get properties that will last for a long time. I look at properties that we can sit on for at least 10 years, if not 20 or 30. And personally, I don't like to sell very often, but when you have the opportunity, when someone is offering you this crazy price and you can extract that money out, and I don't care how much the cost of sales are because there's always going to be some, maybe I'll do it. Okay, I'm open to it. I'm, I'm not closing myself to opportunities. I'm opening to them. <clears throat> so the last thing that the rich do, that the not rich do not do, is they take action. You gotta take action. If you're sitting on your hands all these years and look at the market come up and just say, "Well, I'm just gonna wait till it drops 25 percent," it's not gonna happen for you, to you, my, for you, my friend. <laughs> not to you, or for you, because to you means like a negative thing will happen. For you, it's positive. But a positive thing cannot, even if the market dropped by a million percent, you're not going to buy anyways because you didn't buy when you had the chance at the original time and you didn't buy the second time. You're just going to miss it. So take action. Take action. There's a lot of people that are really successful. They're nothing special. They pass you on the street every day. They buy the coffee at the coffee shop like you every day. You know, they don't drive fancy cars, but they do it. They go step by step. They have the vision. They do the research, they use the professionals, and they take action. And that's all you need to know about how to invest like the rich. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up, even thumbs down. Put a comment. I will answer your comment, especially if it's particular to the real estate. Send some questions. I will answer it. Follow, like, subscribe. 
Thank you very much. Good luck, everyone. Yossi Kaplan, out.